A very good evening to all my viewers. I'm Dr. Sonali Jagati, senior resident of Zingani, having secured an All India rank of 3546 in EPG 2021. So today I'm back with a very interesting and practical topic that is GDM screening, that is gestational diabetes mellitus screening. Now, the GDM is such an uh, important topic that you will routinely encounter in your clinical practice irrespective of which uh, hospital you are practicing in. And uh, as uh, exam going uh, students for NEET PG or INICT, you have to know the GDM screening guidelines, especially the DIPC criteria. For postgraduates, you have to know all the other uh, guidelines that have been proposed by the various organizations. So let's uh, go into the depth. So remember, first let me just uh, highlight all the criteria that we will be discussing today. First is the DIPSI criteria, which is given by the Government of India. Next is the ACOG, that is the American College of uh, Obstetrician Gynecologists. Next is the NICE, uh, uh, NICE guidelines, then is IADPSG criteria, Carpenter and Proston criteria, also NDDG has also uh, given a criteria. Okay, American Diabetes Association criteria. Okay, I will be slightly focusing more on the DIPSI criteria because this is what we routinely practice in our uh, uh, clinics and as uh, practicing uh, obstetrician gynecologists in India, this is something that you can absolutely not afford to not know. Okay, so let's learn about the DIPSI criteria. First thing is the full form. DIPSI stands for Diabetes in Pregnancy Study Group India. Okay, the uh, full form itself has been asked as a MCQ in NEET PG and NICT. Okay, so I'll be showing you the direct snapshot from the NHM website. That is the NHM has given its uh, guidelines regarding GDM. So first, let's quickly brush up regarding the definition. Gestational diabetes mellitus or GTM is defined as impaired glucose tolerance with onset or first recognition during pregnancy. Unlike the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy which have various classification with respect to the uh, uh, gestational age at which it is diagnosed, uh, GDM is irrespective of the gestational age with onset or first <coughs> recognition during pregnancy. Uh, the national guideline uh, for diagnosis and management of GDM endorses single step test okay for the diagnosis of GDM using 75 gram glucose through OGDT that is oral glucose tolerance test remember the DIPSI uh, guidelines tell about OGDT it is not GCT GCT is another test which we will learn uh, later now uh, so what we do is we give 75 gram glucose dissolved in 300 ml of uh, water and that she has to consume within 5 to 10 minutes irrespective of her last meal status. So whether she is fasting or not fasting, it doesn't matter. She has to consume it within 5 to 10 minutes. Now this is done because we are dealing with pregnant female. We cannot keep her fasting. Instead of doing this test with the minimal uh, requirements is the most uh, important point why uh, DIPSI criteria is routinely followed in India considering a low resource setting. So in this they have uh, told the same thing that all pregnant women at the first antenatal contact itself you have to do. So when are you going to do this uh, OGTT test? During her first antenatal visit. If the test is negative you are going to do it again at 24 to 28 weeks. Alright. So again it has been mentioned here that it has to be done on all pregnant female in the population. It, it is done with 75 gram oral glucose. After 2 hours of ingestion you are going to check. It is dissolved in 300 ml of water. Whether fasting or non-fasting state irrespective of last meal within 5 to 10 minutes. Using a standardized glucometer you are going to assess the blood sugar two hours after the oral glucose load. If vomiting occurs within 30 minutes, you have to repeat it the next day or you can refer her to a higher facility. If the vomiting occurs after 30 uh, minutes, then you can continue the test. Remember the threshold is more than equal to 140 mg per DL uh, for the diagnosis of GDM. 
This is done twice during antenatal visit. As I already told, the same thing they have highlighted. And the second test is done at 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy. Now, why it is done at 24 to 28 weeks, that is the pathophysiology, which I will talk later. But you have to remember that uh, the testing is done at the first antenatal visit. And second, if it is negative you or the value is normal, then you have to repeat it at 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy. Moreover, only one third of the GTM positive women are detected during first trimester. Okay, and that is why repeating at 24 to 28 weeks, where the highest uh, uh, level of insulin resistance is seen, repeating at that time helps us to diagnose more GTM cases. Remember that you should at least have four weeks gap between the two tests. Okay. So a test is conducted on for all pregnant female even if she comes late in pregnancy at the first contact period. Okay. So this is important to know. Now that we have learned about the Dipsy criteria, okay, so I have told that the Dipsy criteria is where we are taking 75 gram glucose and it's a one step uh, process irrespective of the fasting status and we are going to measure after 2 hours and if it is more than equal to 140 it's diagnostic for GDM. Next let's learn about the ACOG criteria. Remember that the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists have given a 2 step uh, method to diagnose GDM. So in the first step you are going to give a 50 gram glucose. Now this is your screening test. The first step is the screening step. This you are going to do at 24 to 28 weeks of gestation. Again, irrespective of her last meal, you are going to uh, give her 50 gram glucose. And then you are going to check the level at 1 hour. After 1 hour, if it is more than equal to 140, then it is said to be a positive screening test. Then you are going to proceed for the second step, which is the diagnostic test. In the diagnostic test, you are going to give her 100 gram glucose. Now, this is this ACOG test that we have done. Okay, this test, which is done by the ACOG guideline, is known as the GCT. That is the glucose challenge test. Many of you get confused to when to use GCT and when to use OGTT. Remember, our Dipsy criteria tells OGTT. Whereas the ACOG tells uh, does GCT, okay, glucose challenge test. So when we are going to give her the second step, that is for the diagnosis, it's a 3R 100 gram uh, glucose tolerance test. So in this you are going to give her 100 grams of glucose. Then you are going to check fasting, 1 hour after the glucose, 2 hour after glucose and 3 hours after glucose. Fasting cutoff is 95, 1 hour is 180, 2 hour is 155, 3 hour is 140. This cutoff you have to remember. Okay. This is the same uh, cutoff that has been given by the Carpenter and Postone criteria also. This is the only cutoff that they have given. So according to the Carpenter and Postone, they also tell uh, you have to uh, use 100 grams of glucose and then you have to get these four uh, values fasting 1 hour, 2 hour, 3 hour and this is the cutoff. The same cutoff has also been given by the NDDG. NDDG stands for the National Diabetes Data Group. So uh, with this we are uh, done with three uh, criteria that is by the ACOG, Carpenter to Stone and NDDG. Next, let's come to the IADPSG criteria. IADPSG is uh, important because uh, they have also told that you have to use 75 gram glucose. You have to do it at 24 to 28 weeks. Here you are going to take three values. Fasting, 1 hour, 2 hour. Fasting, if it is more than equal to 92. 1 hour, if it is more than equal to 180. 2 hour if it is more than equal to 153. This is the cutoff, right? Next. Next that we are going to read is the WHO criteria. WHO also tells 75 gram glucose at 24 to 28 weeks. 
you have to do it at fasting and two hours. So WHOs again uh, made it even more less, only two values. Fasting 126, two hours 140. Now this 140 is easier to remember because it's same as our Dipsy criteria. So at least this figure you can remember. There is also an American Diabetes Association uh, criteria. Now this ADA of the American uh, Diabetes Association has given uh, uh, some cutoff, but according to them, the screening has to be done only in patients who are high risk for uh, early screening of diabetes. So, the patient, antenatal female, when she comes, you are uh, going to look at uh, any of the high risk factors, and then only for them you are going to do an early screening. So, this includes first degree relative of uh, having diabetes, high risk ethnicity, obesity, history of GDM previous large baby, bad obstetric history, unexplained stillbirth, any congenitally malformed baby, uh, persistent glycosuria if she is having, if she is having uh, history of PCOS, HbA1c more than equal to 5.7% or hypertension. So in these female, test for undiagnosed diabetes at the first antenatal visit who are at high risk for diabetes should be done. If the test is normal, then only you are going to repeat it at 24 to 28 weeks. So uh, GDM, when you are going to use uh, do a GDM screening at 24 to 28 weeks, they tell you do a, a one-step uh, uh, test with 75 gram OGTT. Okay, or you can also do a two-step method. Two-step method, you can do 50 gram followed by 100 gram. So this is similar to your uh, ACOG, uh, uh, you know, format. So this is the ADA, that is the American Diabetes Association. Now that I have uh, bombarded you with all the guidelines, let me make it easy for you. Let me summarize it in one table. And I found this very, very uh, informative and very useful during my MS exam post-graduation days also. Uh, so this uh, snapshot I'm sharing it from the Ian Donald uh, textbook okay so this is from the Ian Donald uh, textbook of high risk obstetrics and I think this beautifully summarizes all the diagnostic criteria in one table so uh, just see uh, they have also mentioned the year of this uh, diagnostic criteria that have come and in that uh, sequence they have given so as I told, uh, first we'll see the Dipsy criteria where we are using 75 gram glucose and after 2 hours the cutoff is 140. Next is your ACOG and Carpenter to stone uh, and the NDDG which have the same cutoff. Okay, in which you are going to, uh, ACOG remember has 2 steps as I have told. Uh, in first step you are going to give 50 grams and if the value is uh, more than equal to 140 after 1 hour, then you are going to do the second step. In second step, you are going to give her 100 and then check for fasting which is 95, 1R 180, 2R 155 and 3ER is 140. The same values have been given by Carpenter Gustone. WHO tells again 75 gram but after uh, in the fasting state, you are going to check once 126 and after 2 hours, cut off is 140. Dip, uh, IEDPST tells again 75 uh, gram only but first fasting you need to 92 1 or 180 2 or 153 so you can see that the uh, IADPSG and ACOG okay uh, the values are slightly changing see ACOG is telling 95 this is 92 these two are same 1 hour glucose cutoff is same so you don't have to uh, memorize too much change comes again here at 2 hours which is 153 and 155 okay so you can see you can just minus uh, 3 over here okay and minus 2 over here okay? so this is the change and uh, IATPSG tells only fasting 1 hour or uh, 2 hour whereas ACOG tells 1 hour uh, fasting 1 hour 2 hour and 3 hours also, you should remember uh, about the NICE guidelines. In case your examiner is fond of asking the NICE guidelines, you also have to remember that. Now, NICE guidelines have told again you have to use 75 gram glucose, and uh, before that, you're going to check her fasting level, and this cutoff is 100. And after two hours, you are going to check, and the cutoff is 140. 
Remember that if, uh, according to the NICE guidelines, if the woman had GDM in previous pregnancy, you are going to uh, do this. And again, if it is negative, you are going to repeat it at 24 to 28 days. So here also they have uh, just told that in high risk uh, women, you are going to do the screening. And then if it is negative, you are going to repeat it at 24 to 28 weeks. So one important point that the NICE guidelines have mentioned is that uh, using fasting, RPS, HbA1c uh, is not correct for diagnosing GDM and this has to be remembered. We are not going to use these things. It's a very specific thing, test that we are going to do for diagnosis in uh, pregnancy that is giving glucose. Also remember that uh, NICE guidelines have told if glycosuria is present uh, more than equal to plus 2 in one or more occasions then you have to uh, do a stringent follow-up of that female to rule out uh, GDM. NICE guidelines are a little different from the other uh, cutoffs, so this you have to memorize 90 and 140. So I recommend all of you to take a screenshot of this particular uh, table and you have to revise it before your exams uh, This is because this is a very very important high yield table and I have tried to concise it. Uh, uh, using different sources for the ACOG guidelines uh, and the Carpenter Postal, you can find it in the Williams Obstetric Textbook. Uh, the DIPSI criteria is given in the NHM uh, website. Uh, also, the NICE guidelines, I have taken it from the website itself. Uh, you can check it out online. And if you want the link, you can DM me in my Telegram handle or you can write in the comment section. If that's it for today, have a great day ahead.